Howdy folks, Blues Boy Jag here, yet another cigar box guitar lesson, but it's sort of just kind of maybe some cigar box guitar advice. So I'm walking in North Little Rock, Arkansas, Sherwood to be exact, and this is the lake I walk around. It's 15 minutes to go all the way around, so if I go around four times, I get my mileage in. I try to walk every couple of days if I can. So I thought I'd talk today about how I started out playing guitar and how I kind of forced myself to uh, come up with a new way to learn how to play songs. I had a buddy of mine named Walter Gaskins back in 1978 and uh, he had been playing guitar for a while and he showed me a couple of chords. I had an acoustic guitar at the time, which was my very first guitar. It was a Sears Global guitar. It was pretty cheap. It had copper frets. I had no idea that copper frets would only last about six or eight months. But luckily, it took a while before I got the hang of playing some chords. So those frets ended up lasting maybe a couple of years. If I had been a uh, hardcore guitar player when I bought that guitar, or when I got that guitar for Christmas, the frets wouldn't have lasted very long. But anyway... Walter showed me a couple of cool chords and he showed me how to figure out different chords and uh, once I can kind of figure it out as far as learning fingerings of one or two string chords then I was off and running so if you play a six string guitar you're probably familiar with the uh, two finger bar chord so let's just say a G bar chord, two fingers would be first finger on the sixth string third fret, and your third finger would be two frets up on the fifth string. And that's your super basic two finger bar chord. You can do a lot with that. So what I did was I learned the root on six bar chord. So for instance, like I said, G would be the third fret. First finger is on the sixth string third fret. Well, right across from that, the next two strings, same shape, same fingers, is a C chord. Two frets above that is a D chord. So there you got your blues. Three chord blues. G, C, D. So I learned how to do a blues shuffle, which was not that easy initially. It took a while to stretch my finger and get my finger kind of toughened up so that I could play my pinky with my pinky two frets up and do a, what they call a bum ba dee da 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 that's your rhythm for a simple blues shuffle so anyway when I couldn't learn a blues shuffle or couldn't play it that proficiently I'd play it for a few minutes and my fingers would hurt and my muscles in my hand would hurt because I was stretching my fingers so far apart so I do that for as long as I could which started out being maybe 15 seconds <laughs> and then I kept on going and got it to about uh, oh 30 seconds and then maybe a minute and then within a few days maybe a couple of minutes so thankfully most songs are only two or three minutes long <laughs> so one little bit at a time and I stretch my fingers to the point where I could play those chords so the further down on the fretboard the harder it is because the the farther apart the frets are so i moved up the fretboard for a while so i went up to like six seven eight nine tenth fret played the same chord progression and that helped me to have some success and as you probably know the more success you have the the more excited you get and the more you practice and the more fun it is so i slowly but surely figured out different ways to have success Success means accomplishing maybe one or two new chords. And I would play for a few minutes every day on the chords. And I might play some other types of open chords like country chords and so forth. And I kind of mixed it up a little bit. And eventually, as I got more proficient, I could play more chords. And over time, 
I added more parts to the songs and my buddy Walter helped me. But the point here is that if you take a little bit at a time and you add a little bit more maybe later the same day or maybe the next day then you will have small uh, successes and you will accomplish a couple of different things. Don't expect to accomplish 19 different things when you sit down for 10 minutes. You might, you might, maybe, hopefully, accomplish one thing. And that's just fine. I slowly kind of figured that out. Luckily, I was super excited to play the most simple little tiny eight second riff. And that's real important. Don't try to learn the whole song in one fell swoop. Don't even try to learn the first two minutes of the song in one fell swoop. Learn the basic first riff, maybe. If that's too hard, don't worry about the bit intro of the song. Go to another part of the song that might be a little bit easier for you to play. <clears throat> and practice that part for a while. I remember when I played a bunch of classic 70s rock songs. Songs that I grew up listening to long before I picked up guitar. And those songs were in my head already. I had them memorized because I'd heard them so many times. Because I was a hardcore music fan. And I wanted to dive in deeper and actually play guitar. Instead of just being a fan and listening to people play guitar. And so I would play snippets of Kiss songs or snippets of Ted Nugent songs. Of course, all these are blues-based. Because... Uh, that's how it was back in the 70s. Most rock and roll was blues based. And still is pretty much today. So I could learn bits and pieces. And lo and behold, I was playing blues. But I was playing kind of blues rock with one or two fingers. Then I got deep into listening to Neil Young. I'd always been a Neil Young fan long before I picked up the guitar. And so uh, by this time, my guitar teacher had taught me a few open chords. So, you know, open C, open C, open D, open G, open E chords, typical country chords. And once I figured out those chords and could facilitate changing the chords on the beat without going super slow, I realized I could play some simple Neil Young songs. And most Neil Young songs have three or four chords. So, I had the album Harvest. I learned some songs off of that. And Comes a Time, 1978, is when that one came out. So I thought, well, I can probably figure out some of these songs because I had been playing these open chords for a while. Not really playing songs. So I put on a record and I started to walk up the sixth string to determine what chord was currently being played on the song. So I'd pick the needle up off the record and I would have the note in my head. Let's say it's a duh note. So I'd go on the guitar, I'd pick up the guitar, and I'd go on the sixth string. I'd walk up from zero, which is E. I'd go to the first fret, which would be F, and the next fret, the next fret, the next fret. Just walk up one fret at a time on one string until I could determine what the note was that Neil Young was playing on that particular chord. And I could figure it out by ear. It took a while. So if he was playing a G chord, I'd walk up from E to F to F sharp to G. And at that point, I knew that I was on the right track. So the next chord might be, say, a C chord. But I don't know it's a C until I walk up the fretboard and find it. So I'd stay on the sixth string, walk all the way up to the C, and until it matched the chord that I was trying to learn. So I had to pick up the needle off the turntable for a few seconds, play my guitar for a few seconds, put the needle back down, try again, take the needle off, play the guitar, put the needle back on, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, until I could figure out what the note was. Well, then I wisened up, and I used a cassette recorder and recorded some of these songs off the record into the cassette. I didn't have a way to do it professional style so I just used the microphone but it didn't matter because I had the chord figured out and at that point I could figure out different songs because it trains your ear so when I would 
recommend you do if you're trying to learn some cigar box guitar songs do the same thing take your third string and walk up the third string until it matches the note that you're trying to figure out this is good ear training and it helps you to figure out where the chords are if you're playing a three string cigar box guitar for instance the chord would be barred all the way across all three strings zero open tune g tuning would be uh, open g and then you'd go up one fret to the first fret and that'd be your f chord and or your g sharp chord and then your second fret would be your a and so forth so basically you just walk up until you match the note that you're trying to uh, emulate when you're learning the song and you'll figure it out by ear and by repetition you'll be surprised how quickly you can learn songs especially on a three string cbg because to start out you're going to be barring all the way across all three strings more than likely just to keep it simple so let's say for instance the chord progression is g it's a g shuffle and you're in the key of g so that's going to be a g chord and a c chord and a d chord for your blues so you just slide up from zero no fingers at all is your g and that's the key of the song so you slide up to the fifth fret that's your c chord five slide up two more to the seventh and that's your d chord you got all the three chords you need and when i played all those rock and roll songs on the sixth string i figured out the different chords i realized that 99 percent of the chords pop of blues or country is three chords almost every song is just three chords and the more you practice and train your ear by doing that the quicker you get and the better your ear gets at percepting the tones and you can automatically over time hear a chord without even having a guitar in your hand and you know that's a d chord or a c chord or a d chord or an a chord or whatever because you've done it so many times so that really was an eye-opener for me because if i hadn't had that experience by training my ear it was not easy for me to train my ear a lot of people have they're born with perfect pitch or near perfect pitch and i certainly wasn't i think the vast majority of people are not born with perfect pitch but a lot of people have have really good pitch when they're born but i had to train myself my pitch is okay if i'm playing a song with some friends and i don't know what chord they play and it's a quick change like a one second chord and then it jumps to the next chord then sometimes it takes me a second to figure out what it was i for all these years because i don't have instant uh perfect pitch i have to walk up sometimes on the guitar to match that note so don't feel bad if you don't have perfect pitch very few people do if someone sang a note or played a note on the guitar nah i have no idea what note that is nah i have no idea what that note is Duh. i have no idea what that note is <laughs> i don't have perfect pitch but i have relative pitch which means that within a key i can hear the chord changes because i've learned thousands of songs so let's say for instance the song is in the key of a and it starts on the e minor chord and then it might go to the d chord it might even have a c in there and then a g and an a once i figure out the key of the song then i know what those chords are automatically because i've been doing it for so long so start out slow experiment with different types of music start out only on the third string of a three string or four string cigar box guitar walk up from zero until you find the matching note for the first chord of the song 99.9999999% of the time that note is the key of the song sometimes it'll modulate to a different key but if that note happens to be let's say a c the beginning note sometimes it's not the beginning note but with practice you can figure that out if that c note matches the first chord not always but usually the first chord then the song is more than likely going to be in the key of c and you can experiment and determine that with a little bit more investigation 
by walking up and down the third string or maybe the fourth string or I should say the third string or the second string walk up and down until you match the note of the chord that you're trying to figure out and these days you don't have to put the needle on the on the turntable you can use your iPhone and just dink around sitting in your chair low volume acoustic CBG and you can figure out a whole bunch of songs just take it slow and easy and don't try to learn the whole song in one fell swoop back in the day I was happy to learn the first chord and I'd play around it with it for a few minutes after I figured out what the riff was and then I would go on move on to something else I would stop playing and maybe go do something else and come back later that day give yourself some time in between oftentimes I'll be learning a song to put on my YouTube channel and it takes a bit to memorize the chord changes and the timing sometimes if it's a little bit intricate and so what I do is I'll learn the basic chord progression and then I'll let it sit for a few hours or maybe a day in my head and I'll come back and I'll revisit it and you'd be amazed how quickly you will memorize the whole song and you'll you, you've got it done, down forever from that moment on so take it slow and easy don't get frustrated if you can't figure out what the chord is or what the key is come back to it a little bit later or try a different song and you will eventually achieve success but don't be hard on yourself if you can't figure it out quick because most people don't have perfect pitch anyway so don't worry about it if you play with someone who does have perfect pitch they can certainly help you but you don't need to have perfect pitch in order to learn how to play an instrument you can you can walk up the fretboard and figure out what those notes are the next bit of advice I would say is once you do have those chords down play the song for you know five six seven eight times in a row get it down get it tight to where you know exactly where the changes are and let it sit for a day or two come back in the meantime you might want to try a different song the more you work at it obviously the better your ear is going to be and the better your rhythm is going to be as well on a three string cigar box guitar i don't generally use a pick i'll probably do a video on this that's just me though i don't like to use a pick on a three string and the main main reason is the neck is so skinny with just three strings on it and it's hard to strum because your strum circle is tiny the strum circle is is the top point where your hand goes on the up strum and the bottom point where your hand goes on the down strum a six string guitar is much wider so it's much easier to strum a six string than it is a three string that's just me though if you want to use a pick on a three string that's certainly fine some people who start out on a three string probably can do it better than i can because i played for many 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 years on a six string before i ever picked up a three string so that's one reason why i use fingers the other reason is you have a whole lot more control over the rhythm style if you use your fingers like a whole lot like a whole lot like way better if you use your fingers than if you use a pick not to say that you shouldn't use a pick and it it's it's really up to you but in my experience using the fingers allows me to play lots of different types of rhythms so for instance I put up a song called lovely day yesterday a lesson and I was playing the chord progression and without even thinking I started playing the syncopated beat which means kind of a funky rhythm style instead of a down up down up kind of boring country rhythm style I started doing more of a funky kind of a choking finger style so check out that video that shows you some other options of how to strum the song even though the song is the same chords um, it, you can play it your way and you can kind of have a different feel to it so just because 
the original song is strumming blah da blah da blah da blah da blah da blah da doesn't mean that's how you have to play it. You can go ba da chi cha boom pa chi cha ba da chi cha boom pa chi cha, which is syncopation. You can make it funky. So don't worry about trying to emulate this, the rhythm pattern exactly, at least initially if you're a beginner. Just get the chords down, get the beat down. That's the main thing. The chord and the rhythm, same thing, and the tempo. As far as tempo, tempo can be difficult sometimes, but if you play along with the song, make sure that the volume is up relatively loud. Don't learn these songs with your wife sleeping in the room next door <laughs> because you need to have the volume up loud enough so that you can tell if you're on beat or not when you're playing along with the song. That's super, super, super important. I've had guitar students over the years that just practice at night and they have to practice quietly <laughs> And it doesn't really work that well. You, ha you can't be timid, in other words, when you play guitar. You need to bash out those chords. You need to have confidence. And you can't really do that when you're playing at a low volume. So, hope that helps. It kind of... Getting kind of chilly here. I think I've got two more rounds to go around the... Uh, the pond here and that'll give me an hour's worth of walking i'm working on a pink floyd song called astronomy, astronomy domini it goes way back to 1967 when i first started listening to music i listened to this show on the radio i think i talked to you about this at some point before called beaker street and it was late night radio here in little rock arkansas and it was beamed all over the country, so they had thousands and thousands of listeners all the way up to Michigan and all the way down to Mexico, because it was clear that clear channel station. Anyway, I stumbled across that and became a Pink Floyd fan. I had already been hearing Dark Side of the Moon and the song Money and so forth on the radio, and I really liked it, so that was one of the reasons why I dove in deeper to actually learn how to play guitar. So I thought I would do this old Pink Floyd song from their very first album called Astronomy Domini. It's rather strange. It's easy to play. It's just a little bit difficult to remember the chord changes because it's kind of an angular, odd chord progression with strange, unexpected twists and turns, which was the whole point of Pink Floyd, especially back in the 60s. They made up their own rhythms and chords and they broke all the rules and did all sorts of stuff that technically, back then, pop music wasn't supposed to do. So anyway, be on the uh, lookout for that one. Hopefully I'll get it done today or tomorrow, and I'll get it posted. Uh, it's a really cool song. It's really easy to finger the chords. The hardest part is memorizing the chord changes. So keep on plugging, keep on playing. Thanks for watching. Be sure and subscribe if you're enjoying my channel. Happy New Year. Be safe tonight if you're going to go out and party. And we'll see you next time.